Okay, well tonight we're going to pad our loops and we're going to go ahead and twist the loop for the bottom limb. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to line up these three strands per bundle and I'm going to offset these just a tiny amount, let's say a half an inch. I want to make sure we have a taper effect to our loops. And once I have that, now I'm going to line this up just a little bit shorter than what we already have on there. Sometimes I apply additional wax, but a little too much sometimes. and You'll see how that will hurt later. So there we go, we've got our uh, seven strands. Now we're padded to ten. Do the same thing again. Take that black strand and half an inch, and again a one inch. All right. There we go. We'll just offset this one just a tiny bit as well. Alright, so now this end we're going to create the bottom loop. And first thing we'll need to do is measure 8 inches. So we'll get these two guys aligned just perfectly. And this is where we'll start the loop. So here we go, twisting that in a clockwise motion, clockwise motion, look at that, those black strands in there, man that, that looks pretty good, alright, that's going to be a thick bundle, alright. I just like to kind of let these strands and knots kind of line up and lay how they want to. So each step of the way I give a little twist and a little turn, a little tug, and that should be making a pretty good loop for us there. Alright, so my, my little secret of how my strings always look so good on my bow. Uh, bows. I measure them every step of the way. So um, sometimes when I make these for other people, you know, if I have a friend with a Howard Hill and I'm making uh, a string for, you know, that, I'll take my Howard Hill down. And tips are usually fairly similar. All right, we're right about to the end there, where we need to be. Actually, looks like I, I might have done one or two too many, so I'm going to go ahead and just back that off a couple. Let's see how that'll look. The old bow. So, it'll just fit over those big moose antlers. I think that ought to be about right. one extra twist. Alright, now we need to fold this back over on itself and line our colors up. In this case, looks pretty good about there. I'm going to check that fit one last time. It's going to be just about perfect. Alright, so the next trick Back to the clamp. So one thing is, I don't like this thing sliding all over when I'm working on it. So you see I'm getting a pretty good grip on that. Now I need to do some more twisting. 
get those things going clockwise, and then twist counterclockwise, fold the bundle over. Keeping those separated down at the end. So about now, got about half a dozen in there. You can see we're starting to get short on where we have some padding going on. So to introduce this taper, I'm going to start peeling back one thread from each bundle each step of the way. Okay, so that's 20 strands. Now on the next one, that's 18. Again, pull out a red, pull out a yellow. And I like having this solid so I can give it put a lot of pressure on that. So this is probably the least interesting part to watch. But as I keep peeling those out, that's going to give me that nice taper I'm looking for in the final string. The other thing is, by not just letting these run out over the course of the string itself, um, I can trim them, and I will trim them with a razor blade in a step or two from now. There we go. It's funny when I think about this part of the process, usually I think about how quick it feels like it's going. Now that I'm shooting video, I'm realizing that this doesn't happen just that quick. On the other hand, rushing now would certainly not help matters. So one downside to doing each one out like this is untwisting to get it free and then turning around and retwisting each step. Alright, so here we got a couple that are the same length. Take a couple reds out. That should still look real good. There's the short black one. Actually, 
actually. Yeah, there we go. So here's one trick. I can usually make a string an hour when I'm going to this, this level of attention. And if I don't bother doing stuff like this, I can do a string in about 20 minutes. So this does take extra time. Uh, certainly if I was making strings as a business, I would probably need to go faster than what this allows, but luckily when it's a hobby, I can take as much time as I want. Alright, this is starting to look really good. There's one more. Right, so clean those bundles up. Alright, so there we go. Now I'm just going to take and make a few more twists. Alright, that's looking pretty good. A couple more. Ah, there's an end right there. Seven inches. Forget one thing. All right. So there we have just a awesome bulletproof lower loop. Ooh, that fits like a glove. clean all this stuff up in one of the next sections, but man, that yeah, that looks really good. So there we go. I think we'll call it a night.